Today we begin year three with the New York Giants franchise rebuild and we have some brand new rookies that'll make their debuts today. First round pick Rayshon Graham has a chance to become the next great playmaker of the New York Giants. 92 speed, 81 catching, 80 catch in traffic, and 86 spec catch at 6'3", 227. There's been some really good feedback to maybe consider playing him at tight end, and I'll have to think about that. He does have 79 break tackle, which should be pretty interesting. I'd love to have some more catch and run threats on the team. Injury is a bit of a concern though. With a boost, it's currently sitting at an 81. So hopefully he's able to stay on the field and make a big impact as I think that he can help take this offense to a totally new level. We're also going to see Shane Ross become a starter immediately. I don't know yet where he's going to play, but we drafted the highest rated center in the class didn't have normal or didn't have hidden development but I feel like the ratings are already in a really good spot especially against power linemen not so much against finesse hopefully we can get there and then Otis Springs that linebacker I'll try to get him some playing time early on his skill set isn't as complete as I thought it would be as he had like an A grade at zone coverage but you have to keep in mind that those letter grades when scouting are really just, I, I believe it's draft class specific. So basically his zone coverage was probably better than almost every left outside linebacker, but that gets so specific. Like how many left outside linebackers are really good in coverage? Usually it's the middle linebackers that have good coverage. So the letter grades can get a little bit weird there. It would get so much more accurate and useful if they would just have no more like left side right side just go guard tackle off ball linebacker edge rusher defensive end or interior lineman that would clean up a lot of this stuff I'm excited to see this team in action this year. I felt like we did a good job in the offseason strengthening the team, taking care of a few holes. Not everything. There are still some spots that I'm a bit iffy on with this team. I'm not sure if I address linebacker well enough. And now without Blake Martinez, we do end up being a little bit worse on paper this season with Kazir White now being the best off-ball linebacker on the team. I'm also wondering what happens this year at tight end and maybe Rayshon Graham moving there would help us out as we are deep at receiver still and Kyle Rudolph has just regressed. My only thing I guess is I don't really want to spend a first round pick on a player getting the Kyle Rudolph targets. I just don't know that those are super valuable. I'd like to see him be more of a big play threat, but we'll have to see. There was one player I wanted to check on as well from the draft that I considered trading up for, but didn't. Just didn't think it was worth the picks. I would have had to give up more than a third round pick to move up for cornerback Chris Hicks. He ended up being a 71 overall hidden dev corner at 5'11", 198. Better in zone than man with some pressability on day one. So that would have been a good move for the secondary. Interesting here, if we sort by break tackle, we did get one of the best players in the class. The third ranked receiver in terms of break tackle in Ray Sean Graham. We also drafted the receiver with like the sixth highest catching. Catching traffic ought to be pretty good for him. I'm not sure if he ranks first in any of these categories. He's tied here in spec catch, which is pretty cool. Looks like there were a lot of really solid receivers in this class. Let me just take a quick look, though, at the quarterback rankings. If I sort it by throw power, we'll just see overall ratings here. So DJ Spiegel went first round 26 to Denver, 72 overall, scrambler archetype. Connor Donnelly went number three to Chicago. That was a pick that made less than zero cents. Owen Leak, 72. Marcus Faulkner, 70 as the number one overall pick. Best throw power to a non-quarterback is Akil Portis. 
Does Madden get interesting here? Do we have some blackjack rating tendencies? Not quite. If you don't get that reference, my friend Blackjack made almost every draft class in my last big uh, franchise over on my main channel, and he does an outstanding job with uh, those draft classes, making player ratings so interesting. Let's at least take a look at what Rayshon Graham would rate as a tight end. We do some simulating in here, so I have to worry a bit more about overall rating than I'd like to, but... It is nice to see how the game thinks of certain players at certain positions, and he would be our highest rated tight end. Obviously the fastest for strength, he's fourth, but it's pretty close with all these tight ends. Awareness, he would come in fifth. Catching, obviously he's going to be up there, and catching traffic, spec catch will be really nice for him. Honestly, if we want to get some more athleticism at tight end, I mean, I picked up Jawan Johnson. I'm still thinking about that two touchdown game he had earlier this season in real life because he had two really good plays in that game, some incredible catches, and his ratings are honestly good enough to get some real playing time with us. You do worry a little bit about run blocking when you move a receiver to tight end. And we don't have a great run blocker on the team, but Rayshon Graham would be our fifth best. And then you have these secondary ratings here, the run block power and finesse. And he's not going to rate super well there, whereas the rookie John Bolden will. I'd say for now, I'd want to see what Graham can do at wide receiver, and I really want to get Jawan Johnson some playing time there. That really makes Sterling Shepard the odd man out at receiver, and we're probably going to be exploring a trade, as I don't think he'll have a major role on this team. And I like the idea of being able to go Galladay, Graham on the outside, and then Kadarius Toney becomes the new... Or not the new slot receiver, but he just gets even more of a role there. Changing around some positions here, we're going to move Otis Springs inside to linebacker. And I'm kind of thinking we get a little weird here with the number. How about number 11? I kind of like that. Oh, of course, Phil Sims retired. They have a lot of retired numbers here. It's hard to keep track of with uh, a lot of these teams. I wish Madden just had retired numbers in here. It'd be the easiest thing to do. I know it's kind of cliche to say that things, you know, change this thing in a video game, it'd be easy, but no, this would actually be easy to do. All right, Otis Springs is getting number six. This year, it definitely makes sense to start playing Julian Love as a starter over Logan Ryan. It's time for the younger player to take over that role. Mentorship opportunity. We took Andrew Thomas in the first round. Yeah, like three years ago. What's happening here? Is this in reverse? JC Treader is doing a mentorship with Andrew Thomas. I don't think I've ever seen this for a veteran player. I'm not even sure if this is intended or if this is... uh actually what the scenario is supposed to do. Andrew Thomas just got a boost from J.C. Treader. Yeah, J.C. Treader thinks he's a rookie. We drafted a rookie with hidden development, but Andrew Thomas is getting the boost right now. This is the weirdest thing. And guess what? We have a receiver scenario now. I know you're frustrated with Rayshon Graham. Sterling Shepard's going to help him out. I think Galladay would be the more logical mentorship option here. I just want him to work on getting open, which I guess is Shepard's specialty. And I guess we should probably start out with short routes. Start winning on those and then move on to the higher upside stuff. Andrew Thomas keeps improving. Yeah, I mean, he's playing like a fourth-year veteran. Isn't that incredible? Andrew Thomas gets a boost. Congratulations. 
Thomas is in a contract year with Star Development, and because he has that Star Dev, I imagine I'll want to re-sign him. Just so valuable to have better than normal development. Here are the ratings, though, and I imagine, even though he's a 78 overall, I'm expecting his contract demand to land somewhere between 8 and $10 million this season. If you are at least, like, passable or average along the offensive line you really start out around the eight to ten million dollar range oftentimes i like to watch the preseason games and actually stream them but not this time we just go through it quickly here brian petrovsky four touchdowns one pick in the preseason two and two for kyle meyer on the ground pretty good numbers here for saquon barkley and darrell henderson think that was a good move to make him the new running back too. Kadarius Tony leading the way here and then Ray Sean Graham 9 for 145 gotta love that should be a fun year for the passing game and hopefully the offense as a whole can take a step forward Christian Tolbert had some struggles here in the preseason but with hidden development we got to get him on the field for the defense, Otis Springs, 28 tackles, playing that inside linebacker spot. Just three total sacks, and we were very good at getting sacks a year ago. I forgot to actually check our rank. I think I saw it at one point as being like top six or seven, with nobody having double digits. We were just so spread out, and everybody contributed, which I love. Now we have to fill out the practice squad. We'll start with Gary Brightwell. I have moved Matt Pert back to tackle, and I am going to look to trade him away. We have made a trade with the Denver Broncos, swapping Matt Pert for middle linebacker Baron Browning. Ohio State fans going to love this. Michigan fans going to hate it. Baron Browning at 6'3", 241 gives us a really solid run stopper. And I think that we had to upgrade that spot in addition to having, you know, a good coverage linebacker. And obviously, Browning isn't going to offer a lot in coverage, but there are going to be matchups where I think it makes more sense to have a player like Baron Browning play a little bit more. And I love the set of ratings with speed, tackling, and hit power. His ratings are pretty similar to Tay Crowder, but he does have better block shed. He's a couple years younger, and he's also faster. So he really takes over his role. No team really had interest in Tay Crowder, but I traded him somewhere where he can be second on the depth chart for a seventh round pick. Steven Sullivan has a broken finger. I was going to be releasing him or putting him on the practice squad, but he doesn't have eligibility. I have to place him on injured reserve. In real life, this would be a situation where he'd be on IR and then we would come to an IR settlement and he'd be released during the season. Madden doesn't have that feature. Sixth round pick, Trevor Fitzpatrick will not make the active roster. He'll make the practice squad. As we get into our new season, I will be raising the injury slider a bit and looking at some sets on Operation Sports, I don't see really a consensus for where injury is supposed to be. I've seen it at 15 there, I've seen it at 50. I'm going to bring it up right now to 40 and we'll see how that goes. We want injuries to be a part of the franchise, not dominate it but have more of an effect than it's had so far in the series. So if we want to play Chris Tolbert at right tackle, he will be a 70 overall starter, and he takes over then for Emmanuel Adkins. We have Chris Basley at guard, and we're obviously going to play Ross at the other guard spot. So between Adkins and Basley, who's the best left guard? Basley has 87 strength, 77 run blocking, pretty good run block finesse, 76 run block power. Everything here is in the 70s pretty much. Adkins, meanwhile, has, I think, better tackle ratings. He's a better pass blocker, weaker run blocker, which makes him not as good of a fit at left guard. 
So we actually have pretty good offensive line depth now if we're playing Tolbert, and I want to with his hidden development. So here's a look at the starting lineup going into week one. Hopefully we can see Rayshon Graham make an impact, and I'll still consider playing him at tight end, but Jawan Johnson's going to get the start here in week one. Baron Browning should get some snaps at inside linebacker, mainly in the base defense, and then when we go to our sub packages, you probably won't see him at all. We have Jabril Peppers at safety and slot corner. Julian Love becomes a starting free safety. And here are the current specialists. Should be a fun season trying to build upon a 9, 8, and 1 season. Or no, it would be 9, 7, and 1. 17 games. It's not 18 games yet, but that'll be the next CBA. So, we open it up against the Miami Dolphins. What's their story these days? The Dolphins have brought in Jameis Winston at quarterback. He is starting. Miles Gaskin is the running back, but for how much longer with Kalen Washington on the team wearing number 27? Juju Smith-Schuster pairs up with Jalen Waddell and Devontae Parker and Jacoby Myers. Interesting top four receivers in Miami. There's still Mike Gesicki, who's going to be a matchup problem for us. This team would have started out with a pretty weak offensive line, and it really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. So I'm expecting big things from our pass rush. They drafted Will Wall. I remember, I should have drafted Will Wall, most likely. It's a pretty talented defense here in Miami. Javon Holland has become a 60 overall star development. Pretty solid ratings there for him. This is where it all begins in season three. Year two was fun. Now we start over and we're taking a tour of the AFC East this year. Our first three games against the Dolphins, Patriots, and Jets. What is the key? I'm going to say dominating offense. I feel like with the offensive line upgrades, we have JC Treader at center. Petrovsky's got so many weapons around him. I know it's a good defense we're up against, but I really want to see us pass the ball well today, get Rayshon Graham involved, and get this 1-0 start again. And there's Jameis Winston leading out the Miami Dolphins, looking for the upset in week one. I think this would be a situation where they are the underdogs. They're a lower overall team. We were a playoff team a year ago, and I just think we're a bit more complete. They've done a good job with their playmakers, but I want to see what does Jameis Winston do behind this offensive line. We could see 500 yards and five touchdowns. We could also see five interceptions. This has been an unpredictable series, and this is going to be no different. Let's begin. The year starts on first down at the 25-yard line, and we will hand it off to Saquon Barkley as he will pick up two yards. Throwing for the first time in his sophomore season, Petrovsky's taken down by Hill back at the 18. Got to do a better job there. There was time to uh, stay in the pocket, I think, and not drift out. Petrovsky's outside again, running along the sideline for a first down. 23 yards when I wasn't expecting much at all. Petrovsky out of the shotgun on second down, and Miami brings four. He'll dish it out, caught by Barkley into Dolphin territory. Going back to Barkley on first down. That is what this team always wants to do, but there's not much room. Petrovsky again to the outside, but Barkley didn't really have the best positioning there to keep himself in bounds. Really wish they had more sideline awareness and added some context to how they run their routes. Petrovsky on the move again, running for a second first down. Got the Ohio State-Michigan game on right now. It's snowing. I love it. Snow football is my favorite. Petrovsky complete inside the 20-yard line. And there's Jawan Johnson. 
We know after last season what kind of a year a tight end can have in this offense. And we got to take that role pretty seriously. Short gain again for Barkley. Tony Slot left third down. We've made a few conversions along the way. Now the pass is caught by Tony at the five. How about Rayshon Graham getting his first look of his NFL career? First and goal from the five. Heading to the air. This pass is caught at the goal line. It's a touchdown. Jawan Johnson puts the Giants on the board. Great opening drive. Now it's Miami's turn on offense. I'm excited to see what the defense does this year. The pass rush took the step forward a year ago. Mike Gesicki, 13 yards to start things off. Really wonder if we're going to see Kalen Washington, if he cracks the top spot at third down back, maybe. I know Gaskin has some skills there as Winston missed an open receiver. Back to the air, pressure off the edge, and Winston got away from it for a moment, and now he's sacked. Combination of Leonard Williams and Jabril Peppers. A long way to go for Winston. Ojolari applies the pressure, and that is a three and out. Great start to the season. Last year was a dominant 52 to nothing win. Now Barkley able to escape a couple defenders, but a penalty marker will send us backwards. Holding on Jawan Johnson. Now a first and 20. Petrovsky gets out of there and he doesn't get the lead block he was hoping for. Good to see him already running three times. I felt like in certain games we just never got that from him last season. Swing pass. Inbounds. Barkley. Not bad. Looking for something down the field now. Third down and 13. Four on the rush, Petrovsky to his left, fires this deep, and the pass is caught by Barkley! Matched up with a linebacker, how do you expect to win that? Although Jerome Baker does always do really well in these Madden franchises he has for a couple of seasons now. Barkley, 70 yards receiving. Does he go over 100 today? Running left, Barkley to the 15, driving ahead to the 12. 70 receiving, 18 rushing. Kari Blassen game is in at fullback. And we call upon Darrell Henderson for his first Giants carry. Out of the gun on first down. Touchdown, Kadarius Toney. Could have easily been Jawan Johnson, but the Giants continue moving the ball easily. 153 yards to Miami's two. The Dolphins take over. 30 seconds on the clock. Winston fires long at the sideline. Winston trying this again. Pressure is there, and he's going down. Second sack for the defense. Shades of week one against Dallas a year ago. Third and 19, pressure again, gets to Winston. Doesn't matter. Can we make it three for three? Two touchdown drives, two three and outs to start. What more do you want? Petrovsky, little dump off now. And a nice catch and run in the Dolphins territory. And that's the second tight end, John Bolden, the rookie. Running left, big opening, there goes Barkley to the 20, and they slow him down after a 19-yard run. Running inside again, upended, good tackle on Barkley. That brings up third and 10, Dolphins pressing, we have not challenged the boundary corners and haven't really had to. Now a little pressure on the way. Petrovsky's got time to the end zone and broken up for Kenny Galladay.
Graham Gano missed the 36-yard field goal, and the Dolphins take over, trying to get something to go their way. I simmed their very first first down, Juju Smith-Schuster. They do have some good options in this offense, but it's been an ugly start. Winston to throw again. He never saw Peppers. The ball is out. This is going to be Ojulari. The other way. A defensive touchdown for the Giants. There's just way too much pressure. This Dolphins offensive line is losing the game. Jerome Baker, a quarter and a half into the year. He's done with this. 21 nothing. And the Dolphins will take over. It's a first down run to Miles Gaskin. A good call. Just their second rush. Will Wall is sick of this already. The Dolphins might have some problems. Not a very happy team in week one. In the backfield, there's a play. Baron Browning with Beltran having to leave now with an injury. Third down and five. Offset backfield now behind Winston. And he's got the open man who dropped the ball. Jalen Waddle with his speed. Anything could have happened there. All New York in this one. Barkley again starts the drive. And it's a tough front to run on. Will Wall right in the middle of it. Petrovsky heading to the air. He zips the pass downfield to Kenny Galladay as he makes his first catch. Play fake on first down. Petrovsky under duress and taken down by Emmanuel Ogba. A much needed play by the Dolphins defense. Pressing these receivers who definitely have some issues with Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. Second down, Petrovsky almost got away. It's another sack, Will Wall. Hey Miami, do you have any interest in trading maybe uh, Will Wall for one of our offensive linemen? Third down and 19, Petrovsky's gonna run but won't get there. Is that a late hit? He went off screen here. Should this have been a late hit? I saw a little bit of contact here. Yeah, that would definitely get the penalty. Well, the Dolphins got a stop, but they don't have a score yet. And Gaskin, he's loose! Come on, man! Commentator curse is unbelievable! Touchdown, Dolphins! What are the odds he goes 83 to the house behind this line? What's the longest run of his career? Miles Gaskins is solid running back, but he's not like a speedy big play threat. Longest run of Gaskins NFL career. Come on, man. I'm trying to find it one second. It's 27 yards on 301 carries. 2-7. Less than his jersey number. Here's the run. We go with this too deep look, and you want to be able to run on these. Headed to the right side, Kazir White attacks and just kind of gets swallowed up here. And this helps create a really big gap. Good block as well by Devontae Parker. Safety's playing the outside, so there's just no one here to protect in the B gap. And Gaskin's got enough speed to outrun everybody. But the commentator curse that I have on this channel is just unbelievable. Petrovsky almost intercepted. Like, I'll say something in the commentary and the game wastes no time in showing you how bad of a take it was. Petrovsky's going to fire this one deep downfield in single coverage, and Galladay can't come down with it. I just can't believe I'll have, like, a solid point to make or just an observation, and they just age like an ice cream cone in Phoenix. I can't get over it. 
two and a half minutes to go in the first half. The Dolphins with a chance to make this a much closer game than it was for 90% of this first half. Last play before the warning. And Winston's going to hand it off. They have definitely been much better running the ball. Two minutes to go in the first half. A little screen pass that gets out to Gaskin. Four yards and a little bit of consistency at last for the Dolphins offense. Third down and four for Winston. He'll air it out. It's up for grabs and intercepted. He ticked it to himself. The playmaker, James Brandberry, fresh off the Pro Bowl season. What a pick. I do like how they have introduced a lot more tipped plays in Madden. Like, this is pretty sweet. Nice leap here. Hits him in the hand and then able to find it. Let's watch that one at full speed one more time. That was a nice looking play there. Second turnover for the Dolphin offense and a short field now for the Giants. From the empty look, it's Petrovsky with a wobbling throw that is caught along the sideline by first round rookie Rayshon Graham. First NFL reception. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a big day for him or Galladay with these tough matchups. To the end zone now. What a catch by Jawan Johnson. Touchdown. Second of the ball game. That was fantastic. And Petrovsky, when he throws deep, I have so much confidence in what happens. He's earned it. Great throw here on the move. Let's see it again. Roll into his right. Now, you do have to worry about that defender on Graham, like, just seeing it and making a play. But he reacts very late. And Juwan Johnson, thankfully, had the better positioning. 28-7. With some time now for Miami. We'll see what they try to do now. They will throw it with Winston. He's under pressure again. And the pass rush has been everything we hoped it would be. Let's take this one into the second half, where it's 28-7. Giants lead, Petrovsky fakes and connects again with Sean Graham. First down. Three touchdown throws on the day for Petrovsky, playing a really good game. I have been a little worried about just if he comes down to earth at all this year, if it ends up being a, a step back or a sophomore slump. Especially because so much of his rookie campaign was predicated on big plays. But so far, he's been fantastic. Running game still having their struggles up front. I was hoping we'd be a little more competitive there. Like, do Giants fans even know what it looks like to see Saquon Barkley make it through the line cleanly? Maybe at Penn State. This drive stalls. Nowhere to go for Miles Gaskin. That's a nice play by Leonard Williams. And those are plays we expect from time to time with how talented this defensive line is. Second down. They will try it again. A little more success. It's third and six for Miami. Winston has some time and finds the man. It is Jalen Waddell. We send four, and Winston will dump it off again for a solid pickup. Dolphins trying to get their second scoring drive of the day, but now Robert Hunt is going to check out. Robert Hunt had that great, should have been a touchdown just based on entertainment factor in that one primetime game. Nice job by Gaskin. From the empty look, the ball's out quick, and it's another first down. Miami to the red zone now. It's goal to go Miami. Clock running down here in the third quarter as the handoff will get them a couple yards. It's been all Gaskin. Have not seen Kalen Washington yet. Down 24. Got to start somewhere. Third and goal Miami. 
Gaskin, wrecked up by Luke Pope, who's made a couple nice plays today. Of course they have to go for it. Fourth and goal. Jalen Waddle, bottom of the screen. Gaskin is stuffed. And the Giants take over on downs. Gotta love this for C.J. Anderson, who was on the practice squad for much of last season. But he's on the team because he's a good run stopper. He got a few upgrades last year, and they all just boosted his strength and block shedding. Time to cruise to victory. Giants take over at their own three. Let's get away from our own end zone at least. This is third down for New York. Just a run to Barkley, and he finds an opening. Runs it up to the 21. That could be a big loss for the Dolphins if Will Wall misses time after this game. This is a handoff, and Barkley gets a couple. Third down, Barkley just falls ahead. Not much being created there, but that is... The end of this drive. Miami ball. Eight minutes left to play. Winston actually had some time, and now he runs it. Close to a first. Winston on third and two. Caught Gesicki with a stiff arm. Fighting down to the 32 as Luke Pope is going to come off the field. Winston on second down, takes his shot, and it's nearly picked off again by James Bradbury. Third and inches, Winston away from Williams, again to the end zone, and it's going to be an interception. Bradbury second. He is unbelievable. He certainly set the bar for what it means to be a high-value corner in this series. Devontae Parker has been erased by him. We're going to run it now with Ruben Knight, and he picks up a first down, gain of 11. We've sure gotten to see him in a lot of games. We've had some good blowouts, and we'll kick this season off with another one. This team looks all around very strong. And there goes Ruben Knight down the sideline. Why couldn't we give Barkley these opportunities? No big deal, just 40 yards on two rushes. And he'll continue to get carries. Big run for Knight to the 10. He's down inside the 5. 74 yards on this drive. Are you kidding me? I think that's about as many as Barkley has. Let him wrap this up. Kyle Meyer under center, hands it to Knight. He's a yard away. Henderson checks in. Second and goal. This is going to be... Kari Blassen game, yes! He reaches, he's not in. Shotgun three wide, Ruben Knight is back in. He dives into the end zone. Great possession for the second year running back, helping us close this out. It's a week one party yet again for the New York Giants. And I just simmed us to the end and we scored again. I don't even know how. 45-7. It's not quite 52 to nothing, but it's really close. This can be a very good team this season. I can't wait to get into some of our tougher matchups. But what happened here? Interception by Michael Lehman. Returned for 50 yards and then a second Reuben Knight touchdown. 45-7. Three touchdowns for Petrovsky, three interceptions for Winston. 77 rushing for Barkley, 86 and two scores for Ruben Knight, who played two possessions. Like, what are the chances of any of that? Fun times in week one. I hope everybody enjoyed this first episode of year three in the Giants Rebuild franchise. I will simulate us next episode. I want to go through and set our scouts and everything, and we'll take a look at the next draft class a little bit. 
but we have some more AFC East games to get through, and then we have the Denver Broncos, so we don't play a division game for a while. Quick look here at the schedule. Our first division game isn't until week seven, and then we're going to play four in a row, and we'll end the season with a game at the Minnesota Vikings. But that is going to wrap this one up, everybody. Great game. I think we have a really good team. Can't wait to see how far they can go. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. You earned it.